Brother Joe. Uh, I hope you all had a good week. I did. I pray that uh, next week, all you genuine Christians, that God keeps evil from you throughout the week and blesses you with all your needs and, and desires. Um, today, I want to share the word with you about the greatest sermon ever produced. It's the greatest sermon ever produced. It's called the Sermon on the Mount. It's the greatest because Jesus is the one that did it. And we're just going to touch on uh, uh, the Beatitudes. And uh, today we'll just cover three of them. Um, and uh, I prayed earnestly that the Holy Spirit would speak through me. He's given me a gift of uh, understanding. As you know, all Christians, uh, they receive gifts and they need to use them. And so he's given me the gift of understanding. Uh, I don't understand everything. I never will. That's what makes the Bible divine. That's what makes it the Word of God. It's far above any human's comprehension. But uh, I do believe that the Lord has given me understanding of what I'll share with you today. So the first scripture we'll read is in Matthew chapter 5. Verse 3, Jesus, Yeshua says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And what this means, brothers and sisters, is uh, blessed are the people that they know they need help, and they will receive help from God. You know, you have to, uh, you have to humble yourself. I know when I was growing up, people would... Uh, would say, well, I don't want to be a Christian. They, they, they need a crutch. I don't need a crutch. Well, you know what? I need more than a crutch. I need God to carry me through the trials and tribulations that I go through. And, uh, and, and we all need that. And, but we have to humble ourselves. I know one thing. I've, I've visited many, many churches. And I want you to think about this. Most the people in the churches are females versus males. Why is that? The only thing I can think of is the males are too proud, they're too puffed up. I don't need God. But they're sadly mistaken, brothers and sisters. So um, that's what that verse means. All right, the next one is Matthew 5, verse 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Now, th this is, is someone who offends a brother or sister in Christ. All right? They don't take vengeance. They let God take vengeance. God clearly says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And so, I'll give you an example of this. Uh, back in the day when I was young, there was a young girl who was 15 years old and she was a virgin. And she was close to me and she came to me one day and she said that uh, she was at the park and uh, back then they had, many people had vans and they would go and they'd get in the van, they'd party and stuff like that. Well, she's in the van with this guy who owns the van and the guy raped her. And she tells me this and, and I know in my heart she told me this because she wanted me to take vengeance on this person. And I had ministered to her uh, a few times prior to that, and I told her, I said, God will take care of that person. And one week later, she calls me and she tells me that that individual called her from the hospital and wanted her to come to the hospital so he could ask for forgiveness for what he had done. He was in a car accident with that very van that he owned, and he was crippled. From that day forward, he never walked again. You see, God's vengeance is way worse vengeance than we could ever do. Ever do. And uh, there's another scripture in uh, Mark chapter 2, 42. It says, if you offend one of these little ones, little ones meaning Christians, brothers, or sisters in Christ, his children. Better for them to have a milestone hung around their neck and thrown into the sea. God has your back. God will avenge anybody that offends you. So trust me on this. All right, the third one is, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now, 
Moses, the scripture says, was the most meek person on the planet when he was here. And God chose him to deliver the people out of Egypt. Okay? So this is a big thing to me, meek. And, and uh, there's scripture where the disciples one day, they're, they're disputing who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And so Jesus takes a little child, he brings him over, and he says, unless you are converted as this little child, or as a child, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven, much less be the greatest in heaven, okay? So if you're proud, pride will keep you out of heaven. Even if you're going to church every week, you're reading the Bible, you're proclaiming Jesus as your Savior, uh, you're living a good life. In Proverbs, the Word says that God hates six or seven things, and one of them is pride, and He calls it an abomination. That's like the worst thing. He calls the Antichrist the abomination. He calls as lesbians and homosexuals abomination, and now He calls pride abomination. So if you have pride in your heart, brothers and sisters, Pray earnestly to, to remove it from you and be meek and humble. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I listened to a sermon, and uh, afterwards, I got the opportunity to meet the pastor. And I just shared with him how much it touched my heart and how uh, I benefited from it. And his words were, Glory all be to God. Brothers and sisters, that is the right answer. We give all glory to God. That means that no matter what we're doing, whether it's athletics, uh, we get a promotion at work, we get a new car, okay, we give glory to God. We give, in other words, give all credit to God and take credit for nothing. All right, brothers and sisters, so always remember that. And you will be blessed for it, not just here on earth, but God will bless you in the kingdom of heaven. All right, brothers and sisters? So... Remember to pray up and read up every day and keep the love of Jesus Yeshua in your heart. And we'll all be with God someday in the kingdom of heaven. Amen.